Chair. May I say first that the amendment is a disgrace. It's a disgrace as a piece of drafting. The second paragraph makes absolutely no sense whatsoever. It lacks uh, any necessary punctuation that might make it meaningful. It is one sentence where it should possibly be three or four. Uh, I used to be an English teacher. I would have sent the person who wrote this into the special needs class for some <laughs> ideologically committed either to private enterprise or to the, um, corp the corporate, what the, the council way of doing things. My commitment as an independent is to what used to be called best value. I want for the residents of the city, for the tenants, for the workers, for everybody in the city to feel that this council is conscientiously seeking to procure for the people of Cambridge the best value in services. That we are not feather bedding or cushioning any particular section of our community on the grounds that they are working class, labour supporters, or anything else. Everybody should be subject to the examination of their performance and when that performance is seen to be less than good, others should be found to provide those services. <laughs> now, that's my position. Hugely controversial, I know, but I, I think it's important that one should declare one's uh, ideology in these matters. So, from this position, I then have to tell you that I'm completely ignorant about how this has all happened, how it all came about. And I have, therefore, some critical questions which I hope will be answered this evening. Why did city services buildings, why did this council city services, the building service, fail to get this contract? If it was independently looked at in relation to other potential providers, was the decision made based simply or basically or primarily on financial grounds? Was it as Councillor Herbert suggested that they simply came in with a cheaper bid. If, if that's the reason, then it seems to be a very dangerous way of doing things. Or, was there some judgment made about the performance of the present providers, the City Council? And if that performance was evaluated and found to be less than good, then I am not, so, I am not sorry that the contract has gone elsewhere. Except to add that I need to be satisfied that where it has gone elsewhere, the performance is going to be better. And I have had, as many councillors, I'm sure we've all had, we have received communications in the last few weeks suggesting that the company to which the contract has gone has got a poor record in many respects. I didn't respond to this because I didn't feel that I was able to. But again, I want an assurance that the performance of that company has been scrupulously examined and that those who made this decision are completely satisfied that this was a reputable company that was going to give good value to the city. <coughs> I want to conclude by asking Councillor Smart how she could make the claim she made earlier this evening that no jobs would be lost as a result of this transfer. <clears throat> now, Bill Street has gone. She seemed to be happy with the assurance that none of the jobs of those presently employed would be lost under the new arrangement. How can she give that guarantee? If you're handing over these services to a private company, and that private company works on the basis of profit, one of the calculations it will make is whether it can do the job with fewer staff. Are we tying the hands of this company by insisting that there should be no redundancies, no sackings, no job losses? I want answers to these questions.